Did you have what you need? Maybe you can take a seat and we're going to start. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We are ready. Gentlemen, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this first press conference of the 73rd Berlin International Film Festival dedicated to the jury who will be watching the 90 films in competition and decide on the award announced on Saturday the 25th. I will now proceed to introduce our guest, starting with the left side of the table to your, um, in front of you. Um, her footprint on the industry is such that the Hollywood Reporter naturally turned to her for their inaugural casting director of the year focus. She's the one behind the miracles of on-screen chemistry and unforgettable performances in films such as 29 Grams, the Road, Twelve Years a Slave, Marriage Story, Uncut Gems, Succession, Don't Look Up, She Said, Babylon, the upcoming Joker sequel, Folia 2, to name just a few. Thanks for being with us, Francine Maisler. <laughs> From Hong Kong, he was in competition at Berlinale in 2008 with Sparrow, one of the many films he contributed to as a director, producer, or a combination of the two, through a prolific career spanning more than four decades now and covering a variety of film genres, from romantic comedies to the suspenseful crime thrillers that became his biggest international hits. Thrilled we are indeed to welcome Johnny To. She comes from Iran, but has lived in France since 2009. She's an, accom an accomplished pianist <laughs> and started working as an actor at the age of 15. Her performance in Ashgar Faradi's About Ellie, which won a silver bear in 2009, contributed to build her path to international fame. Whatever character she plays, from a witch to a car driver, her, they always have the qualities of a dreamer. Golshif Farani. Like one of her most famous characters, we are grateful for the dark, which has allowed us to see her star shine for 20 years now. A career that has been broad and exciting, circulating between Hollywood and art house cinema. This variety of roles and ma has, have made us feel like we know her, but somehow she always surprises us. We look forward to all the surprises yet to come, including her first feature as a director. We have Olivia Sayas to thank for making her a bit European too, and here she is in Berlin as the president of the jury, Kristen Stewart. <laughs> From Romania, he won the Silver Bear for Best Director in 2015 with the film Aferim, and in 2021 he received the Golden Bear for his unique bad luck banging or loony porn. An award that was decided by a jury exceptionally composed of fellow filmmakers, which is just one example of the esteem and excitement that his pretty and body of work inspires in cinephiles everywhere. Radu Jude. From Spain, her first feature film, Summer 1993, premiered in the Generation section of Berlinale in 2017, where it won the Best First Feature Award. And she's the recipient of last year's Golden Bear for her second film, Alcaraz, the first Catalan language film to receive this top award. Its release was met with great success uh, with both audiences and press. We are delighted to welcome back Carla Simon. And from Germany, her three feature films have garnered, garnered numerous awards worldwide. 
The second of them, Zinsurt, Longing, was selected for the competition here in Berlin in 2006. Boy, does she know how to look at people and places. They just stay with us. We hope you will enjoy the people and places that are in this year's selection, Valeska Griseba. If you allow me, I will just start with one first um, question to the president of the jury, uh, Kristen Stewart. Uh, welcome, thanks for being with us. Um, how do you feel today on the first day of the jury about this mission as uh, jury president? Um, I guess in full transparency, I'm kind of shaking. <laughs> um, it's a, not a weight that I don't fully understand and feel not buckling under, but definitely bolstered by a, a really beautiful, talented jury that I think, um, I, d I kind of can't wait to see who we all are at the end of this experience. It's kind of what you want a festival to do to us, cumulatively. Um, so I'm just sort of ready, ready to be changed by all the films and changed by the people around us. I think that's sort of why we're here. Yes. Go ahead, thank you. Thank you. I would like to ask a question from Kristen Stewart and Johnny Toe. Uh, and it's the same question. Um, as jury members, um, you're going, you are about to see films from Mexico to Portugal and to Japan and to Australia. And I would like to ask you, how much are you of, uh, followers of, of uh, global cinema? And uh, are there any directors or films from the last couple of years from contemporary foreign films that you really appreciated? Thank you. Johnny? Um, you can say you appreciate us. It's got to be a nice show. Yeah. Is it for all of us? Or? For Mr. Toe and Kristen? Yeah. Because we're from, you know, we're foreigners. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, wow. You know, it's, it's, it's like, um, I'm just like, oh, I don't watch movies. Uh, gosh, uh, yeah. I, to, to be honest, I don't want to take up time sitting here fumbling around and reaching for titles and filmmakers of, I'm so sorry, I don't have like the greatest answer to your question, but I do, I kind of want to unpack the libraries of everyone sitting next to me. Um, that's something that'll be fun to do, but uh, yeah, S sorry, I'm a loser. I don't have like a great list of stock filmmakers in my pocket for you. Is it on? Johnny has some yeah, he might. sorry. Yeah. What? Huh? <laughs> Answer the question. Can, can you repeat the questions? About if, if we know, like if we are yeah. familiar with the cinema. Well, it's world. the same question about if you, are, if you are a follower of uh, world cinema, contemporary world cinema, and did you see any, any great films that you, you were impressed by? Thank you. Yes, there was a question here. I. Yamoga. I speak in Cantonese, I will easy to answer for you. Okay? Uh the Ding Lord Hai Chado Chin Kawedin Ningo Chado. I got you get high din ninga say guy there, hold you jim jim siu sat. My go easing a doin ninga say guy. Uh oh him on the young yet I jam see. 可能我講嘢好大膽,但係呢個係我真心嘅説話。I um, think that the films nowadays are not so good as before of those I have watched before in my um, earlier time and but I I hope this is just for a short time and and um and I hope the the film will getting um much better in the future and please um, allow me to be daring speak daring in this um event. I can also Hi everyone. Uh, question for Kristen Stewart. Hi there. Hi. Um I would like to know what, in your opinion, makes a film prize-worthy. What do you think a film here needs to have in order to have a chance to win? 
A majority from us. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Besides well, that. No, it's, a, it's, an, it's an interesting thing to be, you know, quote unquote, in, in charge of deciding what the best film is. It's such an ephemeral notion. Um, it's quite obviously something that's quite subjective. We could find that we absolutely hate a film, but that the accomplishment is staggering and that the feat of it, the ambition was accomplished. But, you know, it's, I think to sort of like mitigate some bias and try and open yourself up to something new is the way, it's a sort of the reason that festivals exist is not just to sort of celebrate each other. It's to go like, has somebody said something that's gonna be surprising? Or has somebody done something that feels like it was really hard to do? Uh, whether you like it or not. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I think, um, you know, this festival in particular historically is, is, is in a positive way confrontational and political and I think that it's like very important for us to, I don't know, deprogram and be like fully open to newness. I think that the diversity and sort of, and the breadth of perspective is, is, gonna, is gonna provide us with some some new material that might be challenging and sort of like strange to adapt to. But I think the point is not to, uh, I don't know, I think like don't pick the one, pick the one that juts out. You know, if we all, if we all can't agree, that's probably because it's pretty good. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I don't know what everyone else thinks, but they should answer too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do you think? Hmm? Uh, he thinks a lot. <laughs> Go ahead. I was happy to listen. <laughs> Deborah Cole from AFP News Agency. I have a question for uh, Golshifte and then one for, for Kristen. Um, this year, the spotlight is also going to be on Iran. Um, and um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the role of cinema in the movement, uh, the, the revolution that's happening for, for basic rights to be respected in Iran. And Kristen, um, the Berlinale has a reputation of being the most politically minded of the three big European festivals, and you're a busy woman, and you decided that this was the festival you're going to be the jury president of, and I was wondering if that at all was, a, was one of the draws for you. Um, hi, I'm ha very happy to be here with you. Uh, I came here in 2009, and it was a very different year. Um, it's very symbolic to be in Berlin. Berlin is a city that broke the wall, the actual wall, uh, towards equality, freedom, and brought so many people together. And of course, this year with Ukraine, with Iran, with the earthquake, it feels like the whole world is disintegrating. We are all in a moment of transition, uh, especially now with Iran. And in a country like Iran that is a dictatorship, art is not only an intellectual or a philosophical thing, it's essential. It's like oxygen. So doing art and being an artist is something beyond because your existence by being an artist is put into danger. Um, that's why for me, again, it's so amazing to be here this year uh, with everything that is happening in Iran. Again, back in Berlin, after all these years, and I'm happy that we can gather together and, and celebrate cinema, celebrate freedom, even though there is the world seems to be collapsing from everywhere. Uh, and I think that's what I appreciate a lot about Berlin, about Germany, about France, about Europe, in the world of consumption, that now we are consuming movies and series, and we can still gather together and watch good movies and being in such incredible jury that we can discuss, gather, art and culture is a fire, we can all gather together and warm ourselves up. Um, and I'm really happy to be here to also fight still for freedom in Iran and in the world. It's such a rare indulgence to be able to actually talk about the thing that you're obsessed with, which in my case is, is movies, um, when, you're, when you're not either promoting it or, or making one. And you have really different conversations when you're making a film as opposed to sitting as an audience and, and, and having a, a group experience that you actually unpack 
philosophically, physically, um, and politically. I mean, I think to answer your question specifically, I think um, uh, it wasn't my decision to be here. <laughs> they, I was shocked that they called me. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, it, it's, it's an enormous opportunity to have a hand in, in highlighting beautiful things in a time where that's hard to hold. You know what I mean? I, I think it's, um, it's, it's, it's the job of an artist to take a disgusting and ugly thing and sort of transmute it and put it through your body and pump out something more beautiful or more helpful, something considered and, and um, not something sort of like knee-jerk reactive. I think we're living in the most reactive kind of emotional, um, emotionally whiplashed time. And uh, to sit and actually have a moment to like digress and look and see what people have pumped out of their own bodies and in response to the world that's falling apart around us, um, that was an opportunity that I was like, obviously couldn't say no to, even though it is daunting to tell you about it here right now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that, yeah. Good to see you all because it's a humbling moment for me. Three years ago was the last time at Berlinale because of the pandemic. Now it's the first time being back again in Berlin and it feels so good seeing you all here. It's like 2019, it's great, it's amazing because my boss told me two years ago, cinema is dead. I don't think so. If you can give me all a little homage to cinema because we are all here. With like, what's his name, what's his address? <laughs> <laughs> because, because of all the streaming thing, but if I look at Avatar 2 and all the other films came out, cinema isn't dead, it's still alive. Life. And if you can give us all a statement why cinema is so important for us, sitting in a dark room with our audience, watching a movie on a big screen, maybe from your own words, what makes cinema so special that cinema will never die? Who wants to go? Who wants to go first? Johnny. Shall we start on one side? Maybe Johnny should answer. In Cantonese. Okay. 文化是直接進入電影 I think that um, cinema represents um, the, um, the, um, the whole part of um, the society and it's always the, um, if the, um, to the Thailand government want to destroy a place, the first thing that they want to do is to destroy the cinema. And um, um, because cinema, it's so close with the public and it's uh, have a strong connection with the audience. And so when, um, and for the whole world, if you want to fight for freedom, the first thing to do is you have to support cinema. the world and I feel like there's a camaraderie amongst each of the directors getting together because the one thing they believe in is cinema and film and whether it be Spielberg who's here um, uh, or at least in the US um, the Maverick Top Gun movie everybody wants to get everyone back to the theater and be supportive and as one of the directors that I work with uh, you know, Ritu said, you know, it's a miracle for a director to get a movie made these days, and so let's all support each other's work, and I, that's the sense I feel from everybody I work with, so. 
Thank you. Yeah. Actually, in 1951, I think, or 1950, Isidore Isou in, uh, in Traité de Babe d'Eternité, Venom and Eternity is the title in English, which is a beautiful, probably not very well seen movie. He said, cinema is the industry of money and stupidity. So uh, I think it's, it's, it's a big truth in that. And uh, maybe a place like this sometimes make a little bit less of money for the film, which I think it's great to see films which are not made with a lot of money and with less stupidity than, than Isu said it 70 years ago already. Sorry. Sorry to spoil the party. <laughs> Hello. Be no making problem. movies, uh, even if honestly, if, if, if anyone thinks that this is becoming obsolete, I think just like take a, a quick glance in your rear view mirror. We have never stopped telling each other stories how we do it, who consumes it, how much it costs. Obviously, like we're kind of headed towards oblivion on that level, but um, I also think that there's a sort of like vital, dis desperate <coughs> need in all of us to create something, and we're gonna consume the things that each other make forever, and yeah. I, I, I think when you start really fixating on like the industry of it, it's easy to be like, oh God, it's all falling apart. But I just think that there's something vital that's undeniable and will never go away. And I know that's like hopeful and optimistic and not what he just said, but I also agree <laughs> with what he just said. It is stupid and embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Hello. No, oh, um. well, I think that at the end, oh, hello, hello, yeah. <laughs> uh, storytelling is something that we need to, to tell ourselves, no? And, and films make us feel, make us reflect and think. Uh, and make us grow somehow, no? So as humanity, I think that uh, the watching films and making films makes us uh, f free somehow. I can only endorse all that. I think I've got longing again and again for cinema, that dark cave where we go together with other people to learn things, to be challenged, and to have contact with things we don't know. I always get the feeling that a cinema is a place that you have to nourish, you have to look after it. A little tender loving care is required, and that's probably a social or political requirement. Some kind of commitment needs to be there. If you see a responsibility, perhaps it education begins in school, but it carries on in the cinema. We need it. I, I can also add something to that, is that when cavemen, they gather together to tell stories, the language was invented. I mean, the whole civilization is somehow coming to life by telling stories. So I think as long as humanity exists, we will want to tell stories and gather together, maybe in a cinema, to, to see it, watch it together. And I think no one, no industry can take that dream away from humanity that really encouraged civilization to, to come to this point, storytelling, and we keep telling stories. Uh, well, got that. <laughs> Mayung 你是沒,你就是沒,你有,你就是有。Um I have produced or I have made movie that's with um very low budget, some of them are less than 2 million Hong Kong dollar. But still I was very happy throughout the productions and um for me film it's filmmaking is about passion and um vision. If you don't have passion or visions, no artist can make a good film, even though you have like 10 billion budget. <laughs> Hello, I'm here to David Martos from Spain. I have a question for Carla Simon. Um, last year, you were the winner of the Golden Bird with Alcaraz. I, I wanted to know what does this award mean to you and to your career? And how are you 
preparing yourself to judge other directors in the light of having been the winner? I don't know if you want to answer in English or Spanish. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, judging feels like a strange word to me. <laughs> I think what we are going to do is to discuss, no? And, and it feels a big responsibility as well because I, I know what it means and probably you too, know That it's suddenly a film that uh, you never know where it's going to go when you have a prize like this. It goes everywhere, no? And it travels and it gets farther and farther uh, than you could ever imagine, no? So Alcaraz has been seen almost every country and by many people, and I think in part is a uh, big part <laughs> is thanks of this prize, no? So I think that we have a responsibility to pick a film that uh, has an impact on us, no? And that uh, we feel that this push can be. Uh, good for, for the film and also for the filmmaker that uh, probably will be someone that we we trust and, and we want to keep watching films by this person. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Hello, my name is Oras, uh, Esquire Kazakhstan. I have a question for Radu uh, regarding the generally Romanian cinema. How has the uh, award two years ago impacted you, your work? How has it changed? Like and how has it impacted uh, Romanian cinema in general, and what do you believe will be the future of Romanian and maybe Eastern European cinema? Well, it's, uh, it's nice that using this expression, Romanian cinema, just makes me remember that uh, uh, Jean-Claude Carrier, in the book he wrote about uh, Bunuel and how they work together, they says that whenever uh, they felt uh, some idea of a script is stupid, they call this Bulgarian cinema. They said, uh, <laughs> They could have called it Romanian cinema as well, you know. <laughs> so uh, already the expression sounds quite, uh, you know, we can speak about American cinema, French cinema, not so sure about German cinema, but Romanian cinema sounds a bit ridiculous anyway. Uh, uh, what can I say? Of course, it's, uh, it's very important for the film. It's a, it's a great honor. Too much, uh, so, so much, so big that I don't think about it because, uh, you know, it, it sometimes can get to your head and to consider that yourself, I don't know. But, but still, I'm an Eastern European Romanian filmmaker, and I don't know if that impacted Romanian cinema. I mean, apart from uh, people telling me, uh, how is it possible that such a piece of shit won a golden bear? <laughs> or uh, some influencer writing something like, I know how this movie, how, how these awards are given. It's even by Soros money. Or by uh, by uh, uh, payment of the film center from every country, and it was Romanian's turn when, uh, <laughs> according to them. So, well, a, a, apart from that, uh, I couldn't say more about it. But I managed to do another film, uh, 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 actually two films, a feature film and a montage documentary, and uh, well, that's that's. For me, the most important thing, and that's the measure of success, to be able to, to go on. Because uh, for a Romanian filmmaker, to use your wonderful expression, for Romanian cinema, the question of making films is, uh, is, is always on the edge of impossibility. So I made another film, so I don't care for the moment. <laughs> So actually, I'm afraid it's time to, to say goodbye for now and wish you a, a beautiful day, a beautiful first day at the, at the Berlinale. Thank you. Thank you.